<laughs> well, first of all, uh, we just went through some examples. We wouldn't be able to cover every type of exclusion that would create an issue when it comes to New York labor law. Uh, and, and that's you know why we have item number five here, because we talked about a, a bunch of forms and, and ways to restrict coverage, but gravity related exclusions, high restriction, designated location exclusions could all be limiting coverage in a way that the policy doesn't pay out in case of a New York labor law uh, claim. And, uh, but, you know, looking uh, kind of like in a summary of what we discussed, we have, uh, first of all, the first step, which is you're just trying to build the lucky person that has a policy that is really obvious uh, with the, well, lucky would be not to have the exclusion at all, but if you're trying to find it uh, in a quick, quick way, it would be trying to control F labor law, try to see if you find something. If the, the document is a scan document, you're not going to find anything. But if it's not, maybe something will uh, pop up. And uh, if that doesn't work, you can then start start looking at the schedule form. So every policy, right before you actually see the policy forms, you see the schedule forms. So you can find information like uh, any any forms, actually, that mention New York. I think it's worth mentioning, worth uh, reviewing. And uh, also, if you find contractors limitation endorsements, those are typically full of exclusions, not only New York liberal law as that paragraph that I showed, but also a uh, high restrictions and uh, other types of exclusions that could be problematic depending on the scope of work. Um, and so looking at the schedule forms and trying to identify uh, New York forms and contractors limitation forms is a good idea too and review them. Um, and then, the third step in case that doesn't present any uh, any endorsements that are problematic would be looking for endorsements that start by saying that that employer's liability section is replaced or that something is being included, a subsection is being added to it, right? So every endorsement will start mentioning what section it's amending, what section is including that new language or either changing or adding. So try to find any endorsements that may be uh, removing the exception for obligations assumed by any shared contract. So if you find any endorsements that are removing that exception and making uh, an absolute exclusion, it's also a, a, a way to find uh, that um, pro those problematic exclusions, especially the ones that are for injuries to employees. And the last one, looking for an amendment of the insured contract definition. The contractual liability limitation endorsement is not only important for New York labor law, but for all other uh, insurance requirements that you have in your agreement, they could actually be uh, not covered because simply the policy has amend amended what an insured contract means. So that would those would be like the steps that you can follow to make sure that the policy is solid and that you don't have that exposure. Thank you so much uh, for that really thorough review, Jesse. I mean, I almost wish there was a way to make it simpler, but I think that's part of the challenge in this is that these documents yeah. are kind of convoluted, but we'll definitely make this available to folks. Um, you know, for what it's worth, I know for sake of time, I won't get into it, but, you know, Jones, we've invested a ton in our ability to use tools like additional uh, uh, artificial intelligence and with the advent and the proliferation of large language models, um, we're developing even more advanced tools to enable our customers to have technology help with the with the with the uh, identification of these things if they don't feel comfortable going through the steps that Jesse just did which you know we're more than more than happy to talk about 